So last time we reviewed the Race G, the middle spec variant. This time we're going to check out the top spec variant, the Raze Turbo. Is it worth the money? Let's find out. So sa harap, the Race G and the Race Turbo look almost exactly the same. You get the same LED headlamps with LED sequential turn signals. Um, you get the same massive grille, the same fog lamps. So sa harap, you can't tell them apart. The differences are more obvious here on the side. Unlike the G which gets 16-inch wheels, the Turbo gets 17s. But like the G, the Turbo also gets drum brakes at the back. Another major difference is the roof. On the Turbo, the roof is blacked out. So at the back, the Race G and the Race Turbo look almost exactly the same as well. Except, of course, for the badging. There is no badging. Oh. So you don't even get badging for the Turbo, so you can't tell them apart from this angle. Like the G, you also get LED day lamps and you get the same blacked out accents. You don't get fake exhaust dips, thankfully. So like the Race G, the Race Turbo also has a manual lift gate. So I wish that the, the button was down here so you get better leverage because from here it's a bit harder to lift it up. It will be easier to lift it up from down here. Anyway, in here you get 369 liters of cargo space which is pretty impressive for the car size. Um, it has more cargo space than the GD Cool Ray and the GD Escara. So the main difference between the 1.2G and the Race Turbo is here underneath the hood. While the 1.2G comes with a naturally aspirated 1.2 liter three cylinder engine, the race turbo comes with a one liter three cylinder turbocharged engine. So if you're wondering why the top spec variant has a smaller engine, it's because this is a turbo, so it produces more power. Um, if you don't know what the turbo is, it's basically a compressor that's driven by your exhaust gases. So it forces air into your engine and that helps it produce more power. And because it's smaller, it's actually more fuel efficient. For the turbo, there is only one transmission option and that is a CVT transmission. So Toyota claims that this can do 19 kpl. Um, I've only driven this for a couple of rounds, so I can't confirm that. But we'll definitely try to confirm that in the future. We'll try to borrow a unit. I don't care if I have to rent it, but we'll test that fuel economy independently. I think Toyota is finally starting to catch up with the competition in terms of interior amenities, especially in the infotainment department. Like this is the nicest screen that I've seen on a Toyota that's not an LC300. Unlike Toyotas of old which came with those small aftermarket infotainment screens that looked like CRT TVs or microwave ovens, this looks pretty modern. This is a 9 inch screen, as you can see it's pretty flat. It doesn't have that hump at the back that you see on other Toyotas. This gets Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. It also gets a reverse camera. But as you can see, there are no active guidelines. Like the G, the Turbo also gets a fully digital cluster. In terms of materials, the G and the Turbo are almost the same. The dashboard is entirely made of hard plastic, like on the G. The steering wheel is leather wrapped, like on the G. The seats are covered in leather and fabric though. On the G, they're covered in fabric. Here at the back, aside from the leather seats, um, you get the same amenities here as the G. You don't get air vents, you don't get USB ports, and you don't even get a center armrest. Overall, I'm quite impressed with the interior of the Rays. The plastics are to be expected, but the presence of leather at this price point and a modern looking infotainment screen is surprising for Toyota. And they have to commend them for listening to criticism and finally stepping up to the competition. This is a relatively short test drive, so it's gonna be more of a first impressions thing. When I get to borrow it for a longer time, I'll do a more in depth review. So the Race Turbo only has 96 horsepower, which seems low, but it is a small and light car. And the CVT is surprisingly tuned pretty well. When you step on the gas, there's a proportional response. 
you don't have to wait for the revs to go up for anything to happen. I've driven some budget cars with CVTs where I thought the transmission was in neutral because when you floor it, the revs go up and then nothing happens. That doesn't happen here. It's not fast, but I think it's gonna be sufficient enough for those who are not exactly looking for a sporty crossover. Which I think covers most crossover buyers, especially those looking for a Toyota. If you're worried about going up steep ramps or going to Baguio, that's not gonna be a problem for the race. It has more than sufficient power for its weight. I like that it has paddle shifters because you get to have more direct control of your transmission. If you want to overtake, you can just downshift, get your RPMs up so you can get better throttle response and a quicker acceleration. It's also ideal if you're going downhill because you can adjust your engine braking. The race has electronically assisted steering which is very light. It is also very numb. You can forget about steering feel, but who really cares about that other than reviewers and hardcore car enthusiasts, right? If you're just gonna drive this in the city, it doesn't matter. NVH levels are okay for a budget crossover. I didn't feel like I was in a sardine can at least. Noise insulation is decent. There's not a lot of vibration, which I think is a primary concern of most people since this is a three-cylinder. Apparently the 1.2 has a bit more vibration. Ride quality was okay, although the road was pretty well paved. I would love to drive this over some pothole infested roads to get a better gauge of its ride quality. Overall, the race feels well put together. It's a low budget car, but it doesn't feel like it so much when you're driving it. It feels relatively solid, especially for the price. I think Toyota priced the race really well. It's priced to compete with low-budget Chinese crossovers like the Cherry Tico 5X and the MG ZS. But it just stopped short of challenging really popular crossovers like the Geely Cool Ray and the Ford Territory. Which I think is a good idea because those crossovers would be very difficult to beat right now. While the Tico 5X and the MG ZS may offer additional features like a sunroof or rear air convents, the race is not too far behind. Toyota definitely upped their tech game for the race, which is very important for millennials and Gen Zers who are the main demographic for these smaller crossovers. Its 9 inch screen is good enough to compete with Chinese crossovers, and it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which the MG ZS doesn't have. And whatever small deficiencies it might have against the competition, the Toyota badge will most likely make up for them. So that's the Toyota Race Turbo. I think this is a huge leap for Toyota. We used to say that Toyotas are under spec and overpriced. This is neither of those. In terms of pricing and in terms of features, this is very competitive. It almost offers as much value for money as some Chinese competitors in this segment. And given that badge over there at the front, it's almost guaranteed that this will sell like hotcakes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.